friends, this is Randy with Ragamuffin Piper. Out here in the 100 Acre Woods, joining with you again today. Got the coffee going and some supplies sitting here so I can enjoy and maybe do some writing. I don't know. Could be. Got to get the old pipe smith lit up proper here. This is an old pipe. You all have any kind of pipes that uh, that you have that maybe maybe the stem don't fit right anymore. This one here's got a big crack in the bowl. One day it just popped. It wasn't an expensive pipe. This is one of my beginner pipes, and it's a. Uh, got some trout stream in there that don't want to stay lit yet but I was going through my rotation of pipes this morning and and I thought well I miss this old one I'm gonna have a little bit out of it working outside so I don't want to use a good one and uh, for an inexpensive cheap pipe it smoked pretty good until its demise <laughs> it don't want to smoke very good right now does it well a lot a lot like a broken things in life you know they work good once upon a time and some things are worth keeping even if they're got a little crack in them because you might enjoy them a little bit longer speaking of broken things my dad used to always say you know even a broken clock is right twice a day so, <laughs> so there's some value in it I do like the stem and the shape, but it got me thinking, uh, we're all just a little bit broken, right? We've got the crack somewhere in our life, whatever it may be, whether it's work or relationships, or if you're younger, it might be working on your degree or... I was talking to a Christian artist not too long ago, and I won't name their name, but you know their their career back in the 80s and the 90s and even the early 2000s was very busy and very well respected. A lot of hit songs, and if you don't know the music industry very well, the music industry is rather fickle of what's popular that's why they call it pop music and Christian music is not much different when it comes to that they like to promote the young and the popular and this artist was kinda lamenting the fact that he felt like his ministry was just spinning its wheels I know as the production side of that guy who used to work concerts and stuff a lot you kind of feel that way sometimes too like the church doesn't need you as much anymore it could make you feel kind of broken so that's just part of my story but I'm sure you have yours and a story in the Bible came to mind it's in John 4 about the Samaritan woman And I won't read it to you because you know how much I love to read. <laughs> I do not. I'll put a listing in the description of what verse I'm talking about and where it comes from. If you want to read it, please do. I hope I can encourage you to pick up your Bible once in a while. Let me tell you exactly. John 4. It's pretty much the whole beginning of that chapter, so 
go to the fourth chapter, you'll find the story of Jesus going to Galilee, and he ends up in uh, Samaria. He's taking a break by a popular well, and it says it's around noon. I, I figure midday. It's probably pretty hot. He's traveled a long way. He's tired. You know, Jesus was the Son of God, but he was human. So you can imagine he was thirsty. He was tired. Sometimes we forget that. He knows what it's like to be tired and thirsty. And it, usually, I think... Uh, most of the women would retrieve water you know for their daily stuff and they would come early in the morning but hello black dog along came a woman there midday all by herself Jesus strikes up a conversation with her and she's got a lot of secrets well, there aren't much of a secret to the people that know her, I'm sure, but she got a lot of things to be ashamed of, I think, like the rest of us. Jesus starts asking her to get him a drink, and she says, uh, from me, you know, she recognizes that he's Jewish rabbi. And during the course of their conversation, It comes up that she's not married. And Jesus says, I know you're not married, but in fact, you've been married five times, but the guy you're living with, you're not married to. I'm sure she freaked out just a little bit at him knowing all that, don't you, don't you think? How did he know? Five times she was married. She was broken, just like we are. And she was living a life that her brokenness was advertised to everybody that knew her. Like I said, it wasn't secret to those in the village. They all knew. You have to go back and think about what that was like during those times. And though she was broken, and pretty much an outcast, I'm sure. Jesus was talking to her about a new way of thinking, the living water that he could give her. Metaphorically, you know, the gospel message. And before it was all over, she became a believer. an outspoken believer if you keep reading in the chapter to come. You see, we all still have usefulness. It's not, oh, I've done too much. I walked away from church. You know, if there's one saying that I can't stand to hear, it's that one that says, oh, I've been away from church too long. If I went back, the, the walls would fall down. I'm sure you guys have heard that, and I can't believe that people think that way, knowing that the gospel message is mercy and grace, forgiveness. But that's a lie. It's a lie people believe. It's a lie from the evil one. It's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is keep coming back. Come back to me. Accept the gift that Jesus Christ came to this world to give you. And sometimes sitting out here, it's easier for me to think about all of the things I've messed up on and hear a small voice coming from I'm sure the Holy Spirit or somebody telling me that just come back 
Jesus used the broken people all the time. He would seek out the people who were in the most need. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you're a, here as a healer, you don't necessarily seek out people that are uh, doing good and don't have any afflictions, do you? <laughs> At least maybe they don't think they have any afflictions. <laughs> well, I wanted to share with you today that no matter where you are and what situation you are in, how broken you think you feel, even if you're cracked like this old pipe, there's a place in God's kingdom for you and there's a, and there's a path, there's a purpose for your life. That's one that is hard to let sink in some days, isn't it? There's a purpose for you. You're not wandering aimlessly. If you're following Jesus, you're not wandering aimlessly. He has a purpose specifically for you. Someone that you need to minister to. A place that you need to be. And don't get caught up thinking it has to be a, a place of great recognition. You know, I don't do these videos for uh, subscribers, you know, to grow my subscribers. I don't care what that number is. It's nice when it's up. Many years ago, I was in a Christian band and we traveled here and there. And one weekend we did a concert where we had oh, four or five hundred people at a very small church. It was a very small church in the foothills and we probably had I had three to four hundred people or something like that. It was too much to count. And we were so we were so impressed with ourselves. You know what I mean? We were like, man, this was a great weekend. And a week later we had a, another concert at a little church not too far away. And uh, There were many. There were as many of us with our crew and our helpers and our wives as there were church members. <laughs> God said, "It's time to humble you a little bit," <laughs> right? Not doing it for those people in the audience. Doing it for an audience of one. I relearned a valuable lesson that that weekend, and that's uh, why you do this. Why do you do what you do? What's your ministry about? And you don't have to be a minister to have a ministry. Keep that in mind. You have kids, you have a ministry. You have grandkids. You have neighbors. You have co-workers. You have a ministry. You have a purpose. You're out on the road, you're meeting people, you go to town, you help somebody out that may need some some food or maybe it's just a conversation and a listening ear. You have a ministry. It's not about recognition. It's about taking that old cracked pipe in here and giving it purpose. Well, here comes a squirrel. <laughs> I think it's time to get back to the chores around here, so you all have a great rest of your day. I hope God will put something on your heart that makes you feel good about where you are and what you've been doing and who you're serving. And if you're like me and that doesn't feel so good, like you're you're not uh, where you should be, then uh, work on it. That's what I'm doing. I'll work on it. So God bless you. This is Randy with Rag and Muffin Piper. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you soon.